Hey, welcome back. So last time we worked on that, uh, we added CCDI key for the legs to have this movement. Um, and today I want to work on simulation nodes, so basically how to get the spring arm wobbly kind of behavior on the tail or on the hands, depending on movement of the body. Um, the only uh, things I added um, uh, since we touched this the last time is I added uh, the other hand in the same way we did this hand and I did it a control I added a control uh, for the tail which is super straightforward it's just a control and then there's a basic fabric and it goes from tail one to wrist tail so that that's all um, if you would do it I do first the rotation and then I do that if you would do it another way around which you could um, then maybe you have to take care to um, adjust also the space here. But that's something that will come naturally in the moment we, we do the simulation. Okay, so let's uh, start this. Okay, so um, what I'm missing here right now is we cannot control the body. So let's, let's do that first. Um, so let's add a new space, call that body space and then we move it uh, in, in the right direction so it takes a body space right click control move it up move it a bit forward because I know there's my bone do right click and then I said set the initial transform from closest bone that looks again like nothing has changed so I select it again to control space again and then you can see the rotation now is in, in that direction so it's in the right position so here here we go so next i add a control in that space so a new control i call that body control here we go um hit compile so there there it pops up and uh, now it is this gizmo let's change it to uh, a circle where is the circle a thick circle that's nice so let's make this a little bit um, like 0 0.6 maybe in this direction and 0 0.4 in this and then making maybe a bit of an offset moving it backwards like I don't know eight something like that so here we go so now we have the control and now let's connect the control get this and now let's connect this um, to the body so we make set transform we add this just before we do anything else and then we add this and it's not in local space it's in global space and this is also in global space um, and here we go so now we could be should be able to move uh, to move our body as it's nice it's already partly working um, we should do propagate to children so we take all the bones with us and now we have already this which is pretty cool okay this looks a little bit like face hugger um okay so now we have the body and we're moving stuff um and what i want to do now is uh, we actually want to move the tail and want to wobble the tail depending on the movement of the body so that's the first thing um we will try with simulation nodes. So let's go to this part here. Um, and now basically, uh, now comes the space. Uh, um, now other space really handy. So I have a tail tip space here. And in this space, this uh, control is living. So the control is, um, is um, influencing the fabric, uh, but the tail space we can do uh, nice stuff with. So let's uh, get that. Um, uh, so we make set space let's disconnect it for now so space we want is the tail space that's the first thing we keep the rest and now the question is what do we do with the transform first we split it up um, so we can also get the transform and the rotation we just take from it as is so we keep the rotation in global space but now comes the funny part uh, let's get uh, let's get the transformation um, let's get the transform from a bone and in this time time we do um, the wrist uh, tail so where is it here's a wrist tail 
um, again in global space uh, and this time we want to take the translation and if we feed it in here and um, if we do this before we do the fabric now let's put this here connect that connect that so now you don't see any change so in the moment if I if I do this uh, the difference you can already see is um, that now it is in contrary to to this fabric it is moving with the body space because we uh, take the wrist tail before we do the fabric and that means I can move it around and then in addition I can do this but it stays uh, it stays uh, in relative uh, movement uh, of this which is already much nicer uh, to manipulate so but now comes a funny thing uh, instead of directly giving this value uh, we can use um, a verlay node so if you if you do right click here then you find the section of simulation there's a lot of stuff I will briefly go through them at the end um, and one that is really cool to use is a verlay uh, vector so we can use this and we can have some strings numbers and damping. I just do some numbers I tested before that worked quite well. I mean, that depends on your liking uh, and what you want to achieve. So now I feed this in um, and to visualize what's happening here, we can, we can actually do um, add visual uh, debug. So you can see this, let's make that green, for example. And then we do a second uh, visual debug on this one and we keep this red. So now you will see if I select the body and move it, then you can see the green is the one he wants to reach. The red is the one where he currently is and he is damping that. So, so now if I do this, I have this really nice wobbly feeling which I don't have to hunt animate anymore, uh, which is pretty great uh, for this kind of behavior. So that is basically... Um, that's basically it. So I will remove the, the debug nodes for now. I could also hide them if I want to, to use them um, later or if I need more, more debug options. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically it uh, for now, what I wanted to show. So um, we can do the same for the hands. Um, that's something we will do in the next video. Or maybe I do this very fast uh, without the video and then, then just showing it the next time. So this is, um, yeah, that's basically uh, that's basically uh, one of those simulation nodes. So next time what I want to do is using the position of the leg and transferring them and interpolate the body movement. So if I move my leg, then the body will also move, um, which gives uh, also again a natural kind of feeling to it. So yeah, that's that's it. So as said, there are some more. Uh, we, we, we checked that one. There's accumulate in different ways. So there's, a, there's lerps uh, and it's for floats and for vectors and for transforms. Accumulate add, uh, there's an accumulate range. There's an average over time, a value over time, different interpolation nodes. So there's actually a lot um, where you can uh, test the stuff. I haven't used all of them yet. Um, but I find them really useful if you if you want to figure out uh, how you want your behavior to be. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so um, thanks for watching. I hope the next one I can do a bit faster, um, and then we we go through the interpolation.